Hey guys, I am Shaft. You are watching a Polygon Gaming Daily Cast, and today we're going to be taking a little bit more of an entertainment bent. I don't want to go too deep into analysis on these new maps just yet. I've got some specials coming out, and uh, we're just going to have a nice little change of pace. Um, there was a little bit of discussion on the new maps uh, at the beginning of this replay, but uh, for the most part, it's just some, uh, some banter back and forth between uh, these two players who... I guess I should go ahead and introduce here on the bottom left hand side of Sequencer Ladder Edition. Playing in the blue Terran trunks, it's Beastie Cutie. Actually, this is uh, the boyfriend of one of um, the members of Polygon Gaming. A um, her name's Aki. She's from South Africa. She actually is highly involved in the League of Legends community as well. So, got a couple of uh, esports fanatics romantically involved it's a beautiful beautiful thing and here on the top of right hand side of that same map he is known for his incredible aggression in pretty much every matchup it's none other than Elizer. all right so this game's opened up pretty standard i think uh, at some point Elizer said that this map is favored for zerg but um, that Terran can win on it, unlike Blood Boil, where Terran should never win against Zerg, apparently. I'm just repeating what he said. I would love to explore this idea a little more, but I don't know anything about it. Anyways, Elizer going for a hatch first build into a spawning pool and gas. He got the metabolic boost, and then he pulled off two from the extractor. This is going to indicate that he is not going to be going for a fast muta or anything like that, and instead has elected to get that third base. Now, we've got the Reaper finally coming in here. Has already killed one drone, and looks like he will survive. So we've got a pretty quick expansion out of Beastie Cutie. He's a player known for mecking, and we see a tech lab opener uh, with a starport. We've got the... yeah, this is looking pretty standard. We've got some Hellions coming out. I know Beastie Cutie's been working on a pretty powerful Hellbat build order lately, so we'll see if that's actually going to be uh, this build order here. Anyways, Reaper's still poking in, being kind of annoying, but Ellas are using his Queen very, very effectively. Viking going to be over on the way. This is going to help kill off a lot of the overlords. And again, Reaper being super annoying. Some Hellions going to be coming in to reinforce this as well. And we've got this Queen just focusing on creep spread. Not really worried about the pokes from the Reaper. I doubt he's going to worry about the Hellion either. But no, it looks like he's going to pull a second Queen to go ahead and engage this. And actually, the Queen's going to be pulled right on back. Because, let's face it, Hellions and Reapers do not kill third bases that effectively. So, wait for the creep. Now that the creep is connecting, we'll have a little more mobility on the Queens. And the Queens will not die, because pretty much they were sacrificial before. Nice use of the... Um, that, uh... What is that, that ability called? I can never remember. Uh, KDS... KDA charge? Yeah. So, we've got a Roach Warren on the way. Spotting the Hellions. This is a good decision. Uh, one of the reasons that players don't typically show Hellions initially is because of the immediate Roach um, reaction, but we've got Stempack on the way, so I guess this is not going to be a mech game, but Raven going to be uh, going to be very vital. This is actually something Innovation has uh, been doing a lot lately, is getting a quick Raven. Now, the Viking did perceive that, so... Eh. We'll see. Anyways, there's an engagement here. Hellion's trying to uh, kill off a lot of links. This ramp is open, but this is a pretty narrow ramp. It can be blocked by one queen for the most part. Ooh, nice KD8 charge by the Reaper, knocking that queen out of the way. Some really awesome play there by BCQD. It looks like he's going to be getting a lot of drone kills here. So far, 10 drones have been killed. He's got to be careful not to get surrounded. Ooh, looks like these queens are actually going to be able to kill off most of the Hellions. Hellions not necessarily kiting in the best way, and this uh, spawning pool is going to... Uh, to block the path, and these Hellions are going to be sacrificed. Now we've got a Nidus Worm that has just completed. It's uh, looking like it's going to be building right here in Beastie Cutie's base, and he does have vision of it, but he is not pulling off SCVs to respond just yet, and uh, actually having lost so many of his Hellions, he's about 25 supply behind, and the Queens and the Roaches and the Lings are all inside of his main, the third base, that he was investing in. Looking like it's going to bite him in the butt just a little bit. 400 minerals are floating, though, 
he doesn't have the power to spend it. He has not necessarily made the infrastructure. So Ella's are taking a uh, pretty fast game there on a huge map. Let's talk about this map just a little bit. This has got a really long rush distance, which I think is why Elizer said it's such a good map for Zerk. Uh, but, you know, Terran can win because there's a lot of drops, there's a lot of nuance, narrow paths, you can use uh, tanks and widow mines and such like that to a pretty good degree. Just the long rush distance makes it a macro game, which kind of tends to favor Zerk right now. That said, because it's such a long rush distance, Nidus is a perfect uh, thing to try. Now, he was starting that Nidus Worm way before the Hellions ever got into his main. So he was going to do that either way, but the Hellions going in there and be then being sacrificed, that's the big thing. If the Hellions had got out of there, he'd have left some of the army at home so as not to expose his uh, mineral lines at all the bases, but because um, those Hellions, of course, would have been on that side of the map. But because the Hellions died, they weren't there to threaten some kind of run by. They also couldn't be pulled back to engage directly, and there just wasn't that much at home. Uh, Beastie Cutie was actually banking mostly on his uh, base structure, his SimCity, to keep him safe, to uh, allow his more effective units to just shell the Zerg from afar while the buildings kept them at bay. And unfortunately, on a big map like this, Nidus Worms really bite that in the ass. Guys, I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.